two. And I'll put this side by side. Go ahead. Good morning. Welcome to our short but really meaningful Holy Saturday worship. We'll begin with the collect. We can found on page 283 in your prayer book. O oh God, creator of heaven and earth, grant that as the crucified body of your dear son was laid in the tomb and rested on this holy Sabbath, so we may await with him the coming of the third day and rise with him to newness of life, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job said, a mortal born of woman, few of days and full of trouble, comes up like a flower and withers, flees like a shadow and does not last. Do you fix your eyes on such a one? Do you bring me into judgment with you? Who can, a clean, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No one can. Since their days are determined and the numbers of their months is known to you, and you have appointed the bounds that they cannot pass, look away from them and desist that they may enjoy like laborers their days. For there is hope for a tree if it is cut down, and that it will sprout again and that its shoots will not cease. Though its roots grow old in the earth and its stump dies in the ground, yet at the scent of water it will bud and put forth branches like a young plant. But mortals die and are laid low. Humans expire, and where are they? As waters fail from a lake and a river wastes away and dries up, so mortals lie down and do not rise again until the heavens are no more. They will not awake or be roused out of their sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in Sheol, that you would conceal me until your wrath is past, that you would appoint me a set time and remember me. If mortals die, will they live again? All the days of my service, I would await until my release should come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 31, verses 1 to 4, found on page, oops, I lost it, in this, let's sorry. I'm on page 622. Thank you. In the Book of Common Prayer. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me and make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness, save me. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Since Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same intention, for whoever has suffered in the flesh has finished with sin, so as to live for the rest of your earthly life no longer by human desires, but by the will of God. You have already spent enough time in doing what the Gentiles like to do, living in licentiousness, passions, drunkenness, revels, carousing, and lawless idolatry. 
they are surprised that you no longer join them in the same excesses of dissipation, and so they blaspheme. But they will have to give an accounting to him who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was proclaimed even to the dead, so that though they had been judged in the flesh as everyone is judged, they might live in the spirit as God does. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be serious and discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, where he, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what the impostor said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went out with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. So I was thinking about the disciples who weren't there at the tomb and that they were sort of like us. In a sense, they were um, probably sheltering in place because they were worried and anxious and scared and not knowing what was going to happen to them afterwards. We could probably look at Joseph of Arimathea as, um, uh, and, and the Marys as essential workers. They had to be there. So, in, so there is this parallel because we are sheltering in place away from one another. And there is a certain amount of darkness, of, of fear, insecurity, anxiety, that um, we don't know what's going to happen. But unlike, and, and also sometimes when we think of dark, we think of all those negative emotions, fear, especially fear uh, of unseeing, of not knowing. But not all darkness can be bad or negative because with darkness, there is light in so many ways. And in the darkness, we can think of uh, the womb of creating, of giving birth. I mean, he, Jesus says, you know, the seed has to die to give life. So as we are sheltering in place in this sort of dark period of our lives, and we don't know what the, what the future will bring, but it is, we are already seeing signs of hope, of spring. We are reaching out to one another. Neighbors are greeting each other who never spoke before. We have the wonderful example of essential workers, the grocery store clerks, the people who deliver our Amazon and our groceries and our, um, the postal workers, the garbage men, to say nothing of the doctors and the nurses and all the medical staff, the people who clean and do everything, who are taking, uh, who give us hope, who give us courage by theirs. 
And so I think we take period and we can look outside, we can see signs of spring around, the signs of rebirth, of regeneration. Now we know the end of the stories that the disciples did not know, but we don't know the end of our own stories yet. And so we can just sit with that unknowingness, but remember the hope and the love that Christ has shown us in his life and after through our own lives. So I would like to just quickly close with a, a, a poem that I found um, by Pastor Steve Garnis Holmes, and he wrote it for Holy Saturday. Poor Holy Saturday, hung out to dry between Good Friday's drama and Easter's. Not much going for it, the empty day bereft of tradition, just an in-between time, a day of waiting around, a day of thinking we knew. Welcome home. This is the day we lived most of our lives in, the wide space between tragedy and recovery, the emptiness between the pain and the healing. We don't always know we're waiting for something not in our hands that has already happened, unknowingly included in a procession towards someone who's already here. Only later, not on this day, do we know we are not waiting for a future. We're watching God unfold. That is enough. That is why this day, drab and ordinary, is holy. Amen. Thank you, Rebecca. So we'll continue with um, the anthem, which can be found on page 492 in your prayer book. In the midst of life, we are in depth. From whom can we seek help? From you alone, O Lord, who by our sins are justly anchored. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitterness of eternal death. Lord, you know the secrets of our hearts. Shut, shut not your ears to our prayers, but spare us, O Lord. Holy God, Holy and mighty, holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitterness of eternal death. O worthy and eternal judge, do not let the pains of death turn us away from you at our last hour. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitterness of death. Let us join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you again um, on Easter Sunday, we'll be back on our Facebook page live at 10 a.m. Um, have a peaceful day.